Hey everyone, welcome to Up On Late DIY. I'm Monica, thanks for joining me. Today is the Power Up Collab, hosted by Sarah of Ken Sarah DIY at, and Zaina of OK At Home. This collab is all about these talented women and their power tools. Loads of amazing projects in this playlist. If that's not sweet enough, well, it gets even sweeter with the opportunity to win a $25 Amazon gift card. To be eligible, just watch the playlist videos, during which each creator will give you their secret word. Leave a comment, including the secret word, and you're automatically entered to win. I'll tell you my secret word a little later in the video. You'll find links to Sarah and Zaina's channels, as well as the playlist in the description box. I'll be making this hobby horse, so let's get into it. I saw a picture of an antique hobby horse and I thought, ooh, I want one. So I drew a pattern on cardstock and I'll trace it onto my materials. I'll make the legs from MDF and the head, body, and tail from three quarter inch pine. Once I have them traced on, I'll use my scroll saw to cut them out. This is super easy. Anyone can do this. I feed the MDF into my blade and I just ride the line of my pattern with the blade. I lightly push the MDF and let the blade do its thing. I'm barely pushing. I don't want to push too hard because that can cause the blade to snap. So I'm really just guiding the MDF. When I come to a turn, I go slowly, allowing the blade to adjust to the direction change before moving forward. I'll cut two sets of the legs. The wood is half an inch thicker than the MDF, so I need to adjust the foot, which is similar to a sewing machine presser foot. This keeps the wood from jumping as I cut. It'll take a wee bit longer to cut, both because of the thickness and since the wood has grain to it, that will slow the cutting process. But I just take my time and like I said, let the blade do its thing. I'm cutting the head of the horse now. And you can see, I take my time with that turn. And I'll just pull away the excess material. This is really easy. It just takes a wee bit of patience. Once I have the head and body part cut, I'll cut off the tail. This is so it will sit flat on my drill press table which I'll be using next. I put the appropriate drill bit in. First, I'll hand tighten the bit. Then I'll secure it using the chuck key. By aligning the teeth on the chuck with the teeth on the key and turning it until everything is nice and tight. I adjust the table to the necessary position to allow the bit to pass through the wood. Placing my wood under the bit, I'll flip on the drill and rotate the crank until the bit comes through the bottom of my wood. Next, I'll cut my base, which is just a circle. I use the paper plate to trace it onto some of that three quarter inch pine. I'm just making adjustments to the foot again before I start my cut. And away we go.
I've marked my center point on the base and I've adjusted the table. This time, I only want the bit to drill three quarters of the way through the wood. So I've lowered my table to ensure that it won't go all the way through. Everything has been cut, sanded, and wiped clean. Time to paint. I'm using Americana acrylic paint and sun bleached for the horse. I'll paint both sides as well as the edges of each piece. And they'll get two coats. Ceram coat seafoam for the base, two coats. I also use seafoam for the wood bead, which will top the hobby horse's pole. And I give that two coats as well. I base coat the dale, which will serve as the pole for the hobby horse with ceram coat rain gray. With everything painted, I assemble the horse. I've marked with a pencil where the pieces will go and I'll use wood glue to adhere them. First, I glue the body to one set of the legs, then I'll glue the tail back into place. That strip of MDF there is just for support. Next, I glue the other set of legs into place. I'll just dip the end of the dale into the glue and add the bead. And I wipe off any excess glue. Now to embellish, I use Americana mint julep to add checks around the edge of the base. I dry brush the bead with mint julep too. And of course, you know I'll be using some floating medium in my project. I work the floating medium into my brush I side load with mint julep, stroking my brush on the plate, which will give me that gradient ombre effect. I'll shade the edge, reloading as needed. And I'll go completely around the base's edge. With Americana Oyster Beige, I'll shade both sides of my horse, also all along the edges. This color is difficult to see on camera, but it is really pretty and really evident in person. You get the idea. With ceram coat hippo gray, I'll dry brush both the bead and the dale to give a nice distressed look. Now, I'll dry brush the base with hippo before moving on to the horse. I'll catch all of the edges of the horse with Hippo Gray. I'll go heavier in some areas to add a more authentic worn appearance. I also mix in some of the mint julep into the dry brushing, just anywhere that I feel it needs it. To add some interest, I'll use my Time Traveler stencil, pouncing on Hippo Gray using a cosmetic sponge. I only use a small section of the stencil. And I added other elements as I felt it was needed.
I added some stenciling to the horse too. Everything gets a coat of clear matte sealer. I also thought this would be a good time to tell you that my secret word is chainsaw. Be sure to mention it along with your comment. Thank you. Now to assemble the piece, I'll slide the dail through the hole in the horse and I'll use some hot glue to keep it in place. Just a little dab around where the hole and the dail will meet and I'll do it on the top as well. Finally, I'll pop the dail into the base and we're done. Well, actually, I did paint the hooves and outline the mouth and ears a bit with Hippo, but I didn't get that on camera. I didn't glue the dail to the base so that I can disassemble it when storing. And here she is, all finished. I want to thank our hosts, Sarah and Zena, for bringing us together for this fun collab. You'll find links to their channels, as well as the playlist, my list of supplies, and further info on the Amazon gift card gift away in the description box. I hope you enjoyed watching, and I hope you're inspired to pick up your power tools and have at it. Best of luck to all. Stay creative, my friends. Thanks for hanging with me. See you next time. Up all night with Monica.